Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this rifle right here. It's the Aero Precision M16A4, at least their variant of it. We'll get into all those details here in just a second. But uh, basically this review came about because, shoot, back in I think February, I did a Facebook Live video where I was talking about how more companies should make the 20 inch um, AR 15A4 or A2, either one type rifles, because they are just a joy to shoot. Very soft in terms of recoil. They have great sights, nice long sight radius. And of course, you can drop optics on them with the A4 upper, like we have here. And of course, the 20 inch rifle also gives you some advantages ballistically over, say, a 16 or a 14 and a half. So that was sort of just my rant. And then a week later, um, my Facebook inbox blew up with viewers telling me that all the components to make your uh, Aero Precision M16 are rather AR-15A4 in this case, I suppose, because it's not auto. All of those were in stock over at Aero Precision, so I snatched them up, and uh, that's the rifle you guys see here. We have a ton of rounds through it. I've been shooting it pretty much every range trip, and um, we've had a grand total of zero issues with it. But what we're gonna do today is check out the accuracy, of course, let the dogs take a look at it, and then at the end, we'll go over all of the different details that go into this rifle and let you guys know what we think of it overall. Time to test the accuracy of the rifle. Of course, it is not free floated. It's basically the stock configuration in terms of trigger, handguard, all that stuff. We do have a light mount on there, but it is not touching anything, so should not affect the test in any way. Scope on there is the Burris XDR2, one to eight, and uh, we got a few uh, loads for you. Target is downrange at 100 yards. We're using a CTK Precision Rest. Think that should answer all the questions. First up, I guess, we'll run some 69 grain, Freedom Munitions, uh, Boat Tail Hull Point, I believe, is what it is. Hull Point Boat Tail is how they describe it. Uh, 69 grain, we'll run it through there and see how it does. Tell you, as a testament to this scope, uh, we are in fading daylight right now. It's eight o'clock, so at night, PM. So we're relatively low light. I'm sure my camera makes up for it a little bit, but even with that, I can see those holes no problem here with the XDR2, so good on them for that. Next up, we'll put some uh, Defender ammunition here. This is their 77 grain 5.56 chambering. Uh, it's the SMK bullet, so we will see. Uh, this stuff does. I've never tested anything, any rifles with this load, so we shall see. Interesting. All right, let me drop that down a little bit here. All right, and the last load we're gonna put through it is some uh, Gorilla Ammunition. This is their 55 grain Sierra Blitzkrieg. The lightest load we're gonna test through this barrel, but it's one that's been consistently accurate across the uh, many different rifles here on the channel. So we shall see how it does. Had a car creeping by real slow like. It'll make you pay attention. <laughs> Let's go check them out. I'm sure you guys can hear that. The winds are coming in. It sounds like it's about to storm out here, so. First group was the 69 grain Freedom Munitions. Center to center, right at an inch and a quarter on that one. 
Up next, we have the uh, Defender ammunition, 77 grain stuff. We're right at an inch and a half on that one, center to center. And lastly, the Gorilla had that one down there. Otherwise, that would have been really impressive. And on that one, we're right at an inch and five eighths. So, uh, really, best one was the 69 grain free munitions, right around an inch, inch, just over, I should say. But for non free floated gun, I'd say that's doing pretty well. Moving on to the details of the rifle, we'll start out here on the end with the A2 flash hider. Um, it's a great all around muzzle device. I've said it a million times. It does a decent job at hiding flash, a decent job at reducing recoil. Of course, the bottom is flat, so that way you're not going to kick up dirt and debris when firing from the prone. So that's certainly a good thing. And then, of course, here we have the 20 inch barrel. It has a 1 in 7 twist. We have a rifle length gas system here. It's a government profile, as you guys can see. This one's made out of 4150 CMB steel. This has a nitride finish both obviously inside and out. That nitride finish is going to give you good corrosion resistance. It's also going to give you nice surface hardness. In theory, it will do a good job as well with accuracy, but we've already tested the groups out, so you guys have seen that. Uh, but the barrel itself is both HP and MP tested, so they fire the proof, proof load through it, and then uh, MP test it with the magnetic particle inspector to make sure there's no small fractures along the way that you can't detect with the human eye. So all in all, very good barrel. The front side block is F marked, so it's the correct height for the carry handle that we'll get to here in just a second. We also have the sling swivel and bayonet lug there on the bottom, so that way you can attach a bayonet just to annoy a gun grabber, if nothing else. And uh, the hand guards here are plastic, of course, on the outside. Then on the inside, we have heat shields. These heat shields are nitrided as well, so it's going to do a good job. Again, corrosion resistance and surface hardness. They work perfectly fine. And of course, if you want to drop any other hand guards onto there, it's a rifle and gas system, so it'll take any of the available aftermarket parts if you choose to do so. As we just alluded to, it does come with the A4 carry handle. The A4 carry handle is a very good site. If you guys have never used one, I definitely recommend checking it out. It has the windage adjustment here on the side, then also the elevation adjustment here underneath that you can dial in uh, depending on the distance of your target. We have two apertures, the open one here, and then uh, the small one that you see up there. So in theory, I guess it was designed for day and then well, this would be day and then night shooting. But also, uh, one thing that's nice about having a large aperture is that for quick, fast up shooting, it does help with that as well. The upper receiver, as well as the lower, which we'll get to here in a second, are made in-house by Aero Precision. They're made out of 7075 T6 aluminum. It has Type 3 hard anodizing on there, as you guys can see. Um, it has M4 feed rims, and when you get it in, it does have the dry film lubricant on the inside, as per the mill spec. So, really nothing to complain about there. In terms of the upper, we have, of course, standard dust cover and forward assist as well. The bolt carrier group is Arrow's mil spec bolt carrier group. So for the uh, carrier here, we have a full auto profile. It's made of 8620 steel. It has the phosphate finish on there and then the Arrow logo. Uh, the gas key has good staking on there, as you guys can see. And it, along with the interior portion where the bolt rides, is chrome lined. So um, again, mil spec in that way. The bolt itself is made of Carpenter 158 steel. It is individually MP and HP tested. Again, just like the barrel, they fire that proof load and then do the magnetic particle inspection on it just to make sure there's no cracks or anything in there. And the extractor is tool steel as per the mill spec and has the black O-ring on there as it comes from the factory. And the charging handle is 7075 T6 aluminum as per the mill spec. It's mill spec in uh, both material and in design, so nothing too fancy, but it's certainly A4 color correct. The lower receiver is Arrow's M16A4 lower, so it's got a few things on there that are a little bit different than their standard lower. So, of course, up front we have the Arrow logo, sort of the retro logo, and then it says Property of the USA M16A4. Caliber, of course, designation, and then also we have the safe, semi, and burst markings on it. Uh, standard, uh, you know, GI trigger guard, A2 grip. Also, we have our A2 stock there with the uh, compartment in the rear. If you guys want to store stuff in there, you certainly can. Uh, feel free to do so. But one thing that's different from like a standard GI A4 is that it has a nice flared magwell on there. So I'm a big fan of the flared magwells. As many of you guys know, it doesn't hurt anything in terms of strength and just aids in terms of function. So definitely a fan there. You guys can see on the right side of the lower, same markings and a little Aero Precision logo on there. Now underneath the A2 stock, we have a rifle length buffer tube as well as a rifle length uh, spring and buffer in there. So the trigger itself is mil spec in terms of feel. Nothing too fancy there at all. It breaks right at five and a half pounds on my scale just like any standard air uh, trigger. Pretty crisp, has a nice reset as well. We already touched on reliability, so we'll move on, I suppose, to cost. So 
It's kind of a tough one at this point. I'm filming this video at the end of November 2017. I'm not going to release this video until all the different components to either A, assemble yourself in AR15, A4 over at AeroSlider in stock, or B, um, they're actually selling this as a complete rifle again. Either way they do it, I've talked to them about it and uh, recommended that they have the uh, complete rifles for sale again. They said they will uh, whenever their production can catch up to demand. So uh, basically when this is in stock, it will be down below in the uh, video description for you guys to pick up either by purchasing the lower upper in components or the complete rifle. So um, right now, if you were to purchase all the different components, as of again, late November 2017, it's coming in around $850 to $900 shipped. So compared to some of the other complete A4 style rifles out there, it's one of the more affordable. And again, as we just went over, it has very good specs, very good components that go into it. And Arrow has a very good reputation as well for building quality rifles. So um, the rifle, of course, like we mentioned in the beginning, is very fun to shoot. However, the 20 inch AR could still be used for many of the applications that we use our AR4, AR-15s for today. Uh, 20 inch AR can still do home defense quite well. Ask any of the Marines that have served in the 90s and 80s. Uh, they've used them uh, with very uh, lethal effectiveness. And um, I just think it's cool, really soft shooting. Definitely stays on track better than a 16 inch in terms of recoil impulse, at least in my opinion, and uh, just fun all around to shoot. So if you guys have any questions about this rifle that we didn't answer in the video, uh, you can always post those down below in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always. But thanks for watching guys. Thanks for subscribing and hope to see you in the next video.